Hello everybody, I am 22 Tiger Dude and I am here to do another animation domination video. We start off with the Cleveland show. In the first Cleveland show episode of this night, we still have a second one after this one. But it's about when Rallo has lice and he had to cut off his afro. He shows up to school, he has a peanut head. Everyone makes a lot of fun with him, so he pretty much cannot hang out with any of his friends anymore. And he's been spending a lot of time with Junior, and Junior's been he's been playing Imagination Time with him. Junior really enjoys the Imagination Bond with Rallo, but then once Junior saw that Rallo was starting to grow an afro, he would sneak in the room in the middle of the night while Rallo's sleeping to shave his hair. So that way Rallo could still continue to play Imagination Time with Junior. And then meanwhile, because Cleveland wanted to avoid the lice that Rallo had, he stays over at his parents' house. So when his parents go out of town, they leave him in charge to house sit. And then Lester comes in out of nowhere. He brings the rest of the gang along, even though the house had the no guest rule. And when they drink one of Crazy Train's uh, beers, that this, they don't have beers like this anymore, so they have to go all around cr driving crazy for th this beer that Crazy Train likes, or else Cleveland will get into deep trouble. So, I'm going to be honest, I really like this episode. I think it's very enjoyable. I think it's very funny. I thought it was well-written. I enjoyed... The whole Cleveland uh, plot, and I also really enjoyed the whole Rallo plot. I thought there were many funny moments. I think I was a little more attached to the Junior and Rallo plot, though. Uh, I enjoyed the imagination time that they had, and their bonding with each other. And I thought it was sweet. It was really nice. I think the only problem I really do have with this episode is just how mean Rallo was acting towards the beginning. Overall, I do really like it. I'm going to give this episode a 9.5 out of 10. I don't know why the hell I did that. I guess since that song was played in this episode I'm about to review, I thought it felt necessary? Eh? Uh, whatever. Anyways, this is the second Cleveland Show episode of the night, and it's about... Prepare for the awkwardness. Cleveland's mom, Evelyn, and Cleveland are mistaken as husband and wife. <laughs> Awkwardness, huh? <laughs> and then the subplot is about when when Rallo steals a candy bar, but it causes Junior to get in trouble, so Donna, he grounds both Junior and Rallo until they get this whole candy bar thing certain now, Roberta is in charge of who's guilty of stealing the candy bar and who's not. And then, of course, Rallo does not want to confess, which leaves poor Junior suffering. Despite the awkwardness of the main plot, which I just described to you all, I actually really enjoyed this episode. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it as much as I did with the first episode of This Night. But I still thought it was a really good episode. It has, uh, it has iffies. And as for the subplot, I enjoy it, but Rallo was such an asshole here. He was not... Rallo was... That was a dick move you made, Rallo. Rallo is a lying bitch and stole the candy bar. So that's one of my problems with this episode. Uh, one, I didn't like how Rallo was in the episode. I thought he was an ass, and I felt bad for Junior when he was crying. I just didn't like that. 
the awkwardness of the main plot doesn't bug me a whole lot, but you know, it was still a little awkward. Also, I thought the ending of the episode was kind of lame. Like, one, it was rushed, two, it was stupid, and three, it felt unfinished. There was basically no ending. Uh, there was, but you know, it they just felt like they we're all like, okay, the, we're, we're almost running out of running time, so let's just do this. Boom, end the episode without even giving it an actual ending. Other than those flaws, though, I surprisingly thought this was a really enjoyable episode. Of course, if you're fans of this show, just watch it. I'm going to give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. Next is The Simpsons, as you can see, and this plot is about when Marge encourages Bart to explore his creative side, you know, take his nice talent in, and he develops a crush on his beautiful piano teacher. Man, how many times is Bart going to have a crush? Oh well, does it matter? Because you know why? I love this episode. Oh, yeah, and there's a subplot where Homer loses his hair and he officially becomes full bald. And, yeah, like I just said quickly, I love this episode. I thought it was handled well. I thought it was very funny. I enjoyed the plot. Even though the whole thing with Bart having a crush on someone, whether it's someone out of school or someone that's older, I thought there was a lot of humor. Patrick Stewart... The amazing Patrick Stewart. He gets started in this episode and he was in the scene where he talks to Homer about being bald and all. And I really love that scene. And uh, as soon as I heard that voice, I was all like, holy shit, that's Patrick Stewart. That was literally my reaction as I was watching this episode. I enjoyed the whole simple Homer being concerned about him being fully bald since he lost his last two sheds of hair. Also, Justin Bieber guest stars in this episode. Now, don't fret Justin Bieber haters. You have to give a lot of props to the creators of The Simpsons, alright? You could tell they cared about you. One, he is only in this episode for four or five seconds. That's literally how long his cameo guest star was. Just three to five short, quick seconds. So if you hate Justin Bieber, don't worry. You could get past three to five seconds, boom, continue watching the episode. And they even warn you. They say 30 minutes until Justin Bieber appears, and then after his five-second cameo was over, they showed at the end. Uh, this will be a Justin Bieber-free zone from, now, from this point on. Which I thought was hilarious. I found it hilarious and clever how they actually warned the Justin Bieber haters about him appearing. So there's a lot of funny moments and I thought it was handled well overall. I hope they stop reusing the whole Bart having a crush on someone or this older person. It honestly does get a little tiring after a while and Honestly, the writers kind of did overuse it this season. I really hope next season they will either rarely do that or not even do it at all. But like I said, I was okay with it because I love the episode overall. And you know what that means? I'm going to give this episode a 10 out of 10. I apologize for being stupidly pointless once again. <laughs> okay. But here's my review for the season finale of Bob's Burgers. So, let's see how the season finale goes. This episode is about when Linda tries to sign up Gene for an expensive baseball camp, but it turns out to be a scam while Tina becomes an espresso addict. Alright, so... It's the season finale of Bob's Burgers. It's the last episode until 
the new season starts this fall. Honestly, I really liked this episode. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very enjoyable season finale. I thought they did a well done job. Of course, it's not perfect like the majority of the episodes of this season. The subplot, I honestly enjoyed a little more where Tina was an espresso addict. Oh my gosh, every time Tina was like screaming or panicking, and for once, her constant screaming actually didn't really annoy me. It actually worked. But it was really hilarious seeing her get so addicted to the espresso and her wanting more of it. It, it did make me laugh and I actually enjoyed it more than the main plot. And the main plot's enjoyable, but my flaw with the main plot was just Linda. She was such a bitch. I didn't like Linda. Ugh. She annoyed me. She aggravated me. I just couldn't stand her. And it aggravates me the fact that she was kind of, well, she pr basically was the winner at the end of this episode. And that was another problem I had. The ending. Yeah. It went down there. Another not quite crappy, but eh ending. But overall, I think it's hilarious. There's a lot of great gags. Well written for the most part. I didn't like that scam guy though. He, that was another flaw I had. He did annoy me a little, honestly. I hope the next season of this show will be a little more enjoyable though. You know, cut off the screaming or the shouting. I hope next season does do that. If they don't, I won't be surprised because that's basically the show's style, annoying style. So I'm going to give the season finale of Bob's Burgers a 9 out of 10. Yo, Mr. Y. Yes, Jesse. Did you know Family Guy is copying off of us? Wait, what? Yeah. They've been, like, making this a myth in this episode where they moved to the farm. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Those bitches. Ah, oh, bastards. Those damn copycat bastards. Breaking Bad. Gosh, I love that show. I was uh, entertaining their impressions. By the way, I hope you enjoyed my Walter White and Jesse Pinkman impressions, by the way. Comment below and let me know what you think of their impressions. Anyways, this Family Guy episode is about when the family decides to move to a farm when uh, they when they were selling their house on Craigslist. It's another stupidity by Peter. And then as they're on the farm, Brian wants to learn the value of farming, so he goes off to college. There's this little tornado. They go in the basement. They find, like, meth, which obviously parodies Breaking Bad. And that's really all you need to know. All right, so... I really liked this episode. I thought it was well done. I thought how they parodied Breaking Bad was really clever. I liked it. I know some of the Breaking Bad fans were highly offended by that. And it, this episode actually got some hate because of that. And I guess I can understand why. But me, I, I dug the whole Breaking Bad parody. Especially since I'm such a huge fucking fan of Breaking Bad. <sighs> so I thought this episode had a lot of funny moments. I thought there were creativities to the whole Breaking Bad references, the whole farming aspect, and the idea of them moving to the farm was funny too. And I enjoyed Peter as a farmer. Like for example, the scene where all the cows are just like going across, you know, crossing the street. I thought that was really funny. It's so stupid that it did make me laugh a lot. The problems I will say I have with this episode, though, is that it can be a little boring and a little dragged out at some points. And plus, the ending mm, wasn't too big of a fan of the ending. I thought it could have been better. It was a little bit of a letdown, if you kind of ask me. But, oh well, I, I did enjoy this episode overall. It was really cool to see the family live their lives in farming style and like I said Doug the Breaking Bad parodies so I'm gonna give this episode an 8.5 out of 10 
Um, this is awkward, but I actually just switched bodies with my pet dog. So I think I'm going to have to be reviewing like this. And if you don't believe me, here, take a look at yourself. It's pretty embarrassing, actually. <laughs> See what I mean, guys? Let me move uh, to a different spot. I'll be honest though, the best part about being a dog is just laying down and not giving a shit. Okay, so this American Dad episode is about when uh, Steve and Klaus, they do switch bodies. So now that Klaus is in Stan's body and Stan is in Klaus's body, Klaus, since he's a human, the wish that he got, he is going to take advantage of using Stan's body to do whatever he's wanted to do, inclu including doing the move that he's always wanted to do called the Flippity Flop. And in the subplot, uh, St uh, Roger tries to convince Steve or the calls to get a membership to his own gym, and that's all. So I really like this episode. I thought it was very well done. I thought the episode had a lot of funny moments, too. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's happening? What's happening? Whoa! Yes! I'm back in my body again! Oh! You take it easy, little dog, alright? Now to continue my little review. So, as I said before, I thought the episode was creative. The idea of Klaus being in Stan's body was... A nice concept to see. The issues I did have with this episode though was that Klaus was a jerk. I know all these years Stan has been mean to Klaus but I I guess since Stan to me has always been a likable douchebag like no matter how much of a douchebag he was he's always likable to me. Well most of the time there are times where he isn't but I've always found him likable and that's probably why. But still, I don't think Stan really deserved that. And Klaus, who's my favorite character in the show, actually, I lost a little bit of respect for him in this episode because I love this character and I just didn't like the character that he has become in this episode. And I didn't like how he was treating the rest of the family, too. And plus, that he was actually hurting Stan's body. And while it was amusing... And some of the scenes Klaus was messing with Stan and the body. I don't know, it was just kind of cruel. Plus, it was a little disturbing and disgusting when Stan had to go inside Klaus's very old human body, which is all like air wrinkly and disgusting looking. And then the scheme part near the end, that was cool too. And of course, it's nice to see Stan get his body back. And Klaus back in his body. And I know some of you are going to disagree with me. You're going to say that Klaus uh, ha has always been nice. And the family always disrespect him. And I can agree with your guys' points is there. But for me, it just kind of bugged me. The subplot with Roger is him just trying to call Steve funny in a couple of scenes. But overall, I didn't get into the subplot that much. The main plot was much better in my opinion. I really didn't care about the subplot at all. Because yes, it is the season finale of American Dad. We won't get a new season until this fall. So the season finale of American Dad does get an 8.5 out of 10. You're a sweet dog, aren't you, boy? You're a good boy. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Twitter. Comment and give me your thoughts on each of the Animation Domination premieres. Like and share this video. I hope you all enjoyed this. And don't forget that I will always have... TAGA POWER!